Hello, good evening. Welcome to Friday's Hope. Hope for Friday and beyond. A time where we can share some things that we've been struggling with. Most importantly, share the hope of Jesus that can help us through. Today is a new day, the song is saying. Blue skies and there's a love that Jesus can give us that we can go to. Tonight, I want to talk about moods. Oh my goodness, moods, feelings, thoughts, whatever you want to call them, they can go up and they can go down and we can get stuck in them, can't we? Men and women both deal with them. And sometimes we feel we are at the mercy of those thought patterns or those feelings. But I have great news for you. You're not. You are not stuck there. There is hope. Hi, I'm Sue Barnhart. I'm one of the ministers at the Worship Center. I've been teaching. I've been in a teaching ministry for probably over 40 years. I asked Jesus into my life and have lived for him and asked him to walk with me for over 45 years. I'm not a doctor and I do recognize and acknowledge that there are struggles in our life that require a doctor's care and medication. But I have hope for you too. His name is Jesus and he has given us so many promises in Father God's word. I had to heal from my hurts. There are a lot of heal healing I've had to heal from in my hurts. And in some regards, I still am healing, but I'm so much better. And I wanna share with you some things that God's shared with me. So first, I wanna encourage you that when that unwanted feeling, that one uh, unwanted thought comes up, ask yourself, where did that come from? Just stop. Just stop. You don't have to think those things through. Just stop and say, where did that come from? What in the world? I've had many, many times. I'm just doing everyday things, driving through town, whatever. And all of a sudden, hurtful thoughts come up. I go, what? How many times are those thoughts will come from a train of thoughts. How many times has it started in a little thought and then all of a sudden, boom, there's this huge thought that's hurting me all of a sudden. An example, I was thinking about, and I was, for example, I was thinking about doing my hair and makeup and getting ready for work. Everything I've, something I've done for many, many years. So I'm getting ready for work, doing my hair and mounting my makeup. And that thought took me to a time when I did that for someone special. Then that thought took me to the, to the point that I'm not with them anymore. Then that thought took me to there was somebody else and doing things I wish we could have done. And within a few short minutes, I was really hurt. I was really sad and hurt. And I stopped myself and I said, really? From doing makeup? Really, Sue? And the answer was, yeah. Yeah, it really was from doing makeup. But I had to stop and ask myself, how did I get here? And I stopped that little train by reminding myself all God has done for me and how he has healed me where I am today, and how that whole train of thought may be true. It is true. It absolutely is true. But I'm strong. I'm healthy. It's okay. I'm in a wonderful place because I gave it all to God and I forgave. Now, those last two things, giving them to God and forgiving, that's a process. And it's had to happen over and over and over again sometimes. Sometimes the issues are done. Sometimes it happens to, has to happen over and over. I encourage you, men and women, I encourage you to do that, though. Even doing this study, 
brought up some things that I had to go and pray about and say, God, mm -mm, nope, this is not going to happen. I'm going to stay right where you put me, and that's in peace. So those last two things have to hope happen over and over again. It's not a one-time process, but it is a process that can yield a wonderful healing through Christ and his power and love. And he brought some scriptures to mind as I was thinking about this. This is this first one has been my my go-to scripture when I see things happening that might hurt or that might cause a problem in my life. Here it is, Proverbs 3, 5. Some of you can recite this with me. Some of this is brand new to you. Here it is. Fix your, whoops, I'm sorry. Trust in the Lord. Trust, that's a toughie. We talked about that last week. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. All your heart, oh, I say all your hurts. Lean not on your own understanding. When I see things happening, boy, I can come to assumptions and conclusions about what might be happening. None of it's right. I am so wrong so many times. In all your ways, everything I do, Acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Another one, Philippians 4, 8. And again, some of these may be very familiar to you, but if we don't apply them in a real manner, then they're just words. Uh, one of my friends said, you know, you can read the word, but and I'm glad that's your favorite scripture, but have you applied it to your life? Folks, apply it to your life. Philippians 4, 8, fix your thought on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. What's, what's true in your life? True is you're healthy. You're standing right there. You're sitting right there listening to this. Right things. What's right in your life? Your kids, your your job, going to the festival we got going on. You know, what's what's lovely? Maybe your grandchildren. I don't know where you are, what you're doing, but there are things that we can fix our thoughts on. Not the not the difficult things, not the negative things, which is where many times we end up doing this, fixing our thoughts on the negative things. No. We have the ability to fix our thoughts on things that are good. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Isaiah 26.3, this is a new, not a new verse to me, but it's new to me in applying it to my life. You, meaning God, will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. There's that word again, fixed. Fixed on you, fixed on him, fixed on the things of God, fixed on his word. You don't have to stay fixed on those negative thoughts. They don't have to keep running back and forth through your mind. And they will. They'll try and come back time and again, even times when you think it's all fixed. Even when times when you think you're healed, they'll try and creep back in again. No. Stop them. And you start thinking about these things. There's triggers, too. Oh, my goodness, are there triggers. Everyday things as well as big things. Doing something that reminds us of a horrible situation. This is what happened to me. And I shared this with some other folks, but it's something that comes up. I'm sitting in my own parking lot in my own car, and it was running terribly. I mean, it was spitting and sputtering. It sounded like the rod was going to come straight through the engine. And I started to get afraid. I'm sitting in my own parking lot. I haven't even moved yet for work. This was several years ago. And I had to ask myself, why? Why am I sitting here in my own parking lot, in my own car, afraid because it's running bad? And I'm thinking it could do this, it could do that, da 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 but because I stopped and asked myself why in the world I was like this, it dawned on me past things had happened. And many times when I was stranded, or I did end up stranded, I didn't have help to take care of me. 
I didn't have anybody to come get me or to fix it. Or if I did have somebody fix it, it was a horrible situation and somebody would get upset at me because I had to spend money on the car. Or maybe I was somebody was upset at me because they said I broke the car. I didn't break the car. I simply started it. It had over 100,000 miles on it. It was badly abused by some other people. It was expected to run a little rough. You know what I'm saying? So I stopped. I looked around. I realized present tense right now. I was in my own parking lot. I could easily get up and walk into my own apartment. I realized I could pick up my phone, which happened to be sitting next to me, and call more than one person and say, hey, I'm having trouble with my car. Could you come help me? And there are a myriad of people that would have helped me, and I appreciate every single one of you. You know who you are. <clears throat> so I stopped that train of thought, that trigger, that fear. I stopped it because it wasn't true. Pay attention to where you're at right now. Pay attention to what's happening right now, not the things of the past. That's past. Pay attention to the good things that's happening right now. I think of the young mothers dealing with children. God bless you guys. I, I, I can't even imagine when I did it, and I didn't do it well. But God bless you guys. Those babies are tender. Take good care of them. Enjoy being with them. God bless you dads. God bless you moms. They're beautiful. Pay attention to what's happening right now, right in front of you. Not that stuff that happened. And that's in the past. There's nothing they can do. it can do for you anymore besides destroy you. So then there, again, the wonderful promises of God. Philippians 4.13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Hello, God, Christ is the one who's going to give us the ability to do these things, okay? Jesus, I need your help. I, this train thought, this thought of, uh, train of thought is getting me nowhere. Help me get back on track. And this uh, verse 19 of Philippians 4, and the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs for his glorious riches, which we have been given uh, to us in Christ Jesus. At the time that those words were written, the author, for those who don't know, the book is Philippians, the author is Paul. He's not sitting in some castle or, or a temple. He's not sitting in some home or, or wonderful place. He's sitting in a deep, dark, wet, damp cave-like jail shackled and from what I remember reading to the guards not just shackled to a wall he shackled to the guards I think now if I'm wrong I apologize he's sitting there in this deep dark place in jail writing these words saying the same God who takes care of me you're get saying to me you're being taken care of in jail <clears throat> yeah because he was able to share God with so many of those other prisoners and, and some of the guards as well. That he's going to supply all your needs as well. And the need that we have that we're talking about tonight is the need of settling our emotions, walking in peace, settling our minds, staying on that straight path that we all struggle, that we all want to be at. It is possible. It is possible, I promise you. I know, and so did Paul, who's sitting in this deep, dark, cave-like jail. Look, during the biblical times, for those of you who don't know, <laughs> jail was this jail that we have nowadays is a um, castle, is a haven, compared to what the jail was like back in the day, back during the time of uh, Jesus. There's physical reasons sometimes we struggle with um, anger or feelings or moods. My kids will attest to this because they had to go through it with me. No comments on it anyway, anywhere. I find myself, I found myself getting very angry any time during the day for what I thought was no reason. I, why am I angry? Nothing's going on. Still happens to me today. But I stopped. I looked, 
I did some research to find out what was going on. <laughs> Hormones, I was going through the hot flashes, I was going through menopause, going through the whole thing. My whole body was in an uproar. <clears throat> so therefore, I was just all of a sudden furious. I mean, not a little bit angry, but furious. Once I understood that, and knowledge is power, ladies and gentlemen, knowledge of the scriptures, knowledge of physical anatomy, knowledge of medications, knowledge of, of diseases, whatever, it is power. Once I understood that, once I understood my hormones were doing dancing back and forth, and that that would be sending me in a time of anger, then I knew immediately, I knew immediately when that happened, what was about to happen was a hot flash. I went, okay, I'll sit here and wait a minute. And sure enough, it showed up. You know, I understand. I recognized and could st stay and wait a minute and say to myself, this isn't real. This is my body being off balance right now, and it's going to pass. There's many physical reasons our moods change when we're sick. How many of us are sick easily? I'm not. I whine. I want my blankie. I admit to it. Um, there's um, not. There's being tired. Look, y'all, if you have kids and you work, that all by itself will wear you out, let alone not feeling good and a ton of other things that will cause, cause you to be tired. I know for myself, if I don't get a full night's sleep, I do not do well the next day. I promise you, I don't. Everything looks twice as big. It looks like it's impossible to do, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That's when I have to go to Christ. I have to go to God and say, God, I am exhausted. Help me through this. Just help me get through it. Keep my mood. Keep my peace. Help me do my, keep my peace. There's many physical reasons. We're sick, we're tired, we're overwhelmed. How many times have we been overwhelmed? Good gravy. We have blood sugar issues, heart issues. So many things can throw our moods and our, our feelings and our mindset off. So many things. Stop. Even medications we have to take come sometimes causes our mood to go off or our feelings to go weird. Steroids. Prednisone, hello, that is not a nice drug for that. I take it when I have to, but boy, do can I tell you about my mood swings when I'm on that stuff. So many things. Wonderful drug. I'm not knocking at all. I've had to take it off and on most of my life. But I know when I'm on that, it's going to get a little weird in my head sometimes. Medications, our feelings to go off. All I'm saying here. All I'm saying here, and I'm almost done, there are a myriad of things, a myriad of things that can affect our mood and our thought patterns and our feelings. It's only temporary. Let me say that again. They're only temporary. I promise you. Give yourself some time. Get some rest. Find out where it's coming from. Do some work and grab a hold of the promises of God. Don't let something temporary live permanently in your life. It doesn't have to be that way. There's so many promises in the Bible for help. And the one help is comes from 2 Corinthians 10, chapter 10, verse 4. This is the King James Version. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, and boy, are we in a warfare when it comes to, to feelings and thoughts, are not carnal, that means we're not, it's not fleshly, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hello, those strongholds, those thoughts that keep coming back. Oh, no, you don't. Mm -mm. The New Living Translation Version puts it much differently, and I love it. We use God's mighty weapons. He gives them to us when we call on him. Not worldly weapons. To knock down the strongholds of human reasoning. Hello, how many times do we end up reasoning things and it ends up being a mess? Human reasonings and to destroy false arguments. Hello, we can, destroy. We can use God's mighty weapons to do that. Romans ver, uh, chapter 8, verse 6, uh, the NIV version. The mind governed by us, the flesh, 
is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, is life and peace. Life and peace. We can have that. We can walk in that. It's not every second. I'm not telling you that it's all the time and I walk in la-la land, okay? What I am telling you is I have victory over those ugly thoughts. I have victory over those things that hurt, over those things that want to pull me into darkness and blackness. And when they do try and come back, which, by the way, they do, I have victory over that, too. Because those are things that the Spirit can help me take care of. God's Word can help me. God's power, God's strength, God's weapons can help me stop those things right away. It's through calling on God's truth that can start to regulate your mind. Those thoughts of anger, hurt, depression can be stopped or at least lessened for those who struggle with physical brain um, illnesses by stopping and evaluating why it's happening. What is this about? Just stop. And then calling on God, even asking God to help you stop that train of thought. And then calling on God and reciting his truths and realizing so much of what we are thinking and feeling isn't true. It's only a moment. Feelings lie. Our mind can be regulated, and we can be happy, joyful is what the word I should be using, and peaceful through Christ and his truth. We don't have to dwell on the false thoughts. We can dwell on the rich, rich promises of God's word and replace those thoughts with truths that will last forever. Again, I want to encourage you, if you feel like you want to hurt yourself or others, Please, please, please call someone, your pastor, your doctor, the hospital, the police, the 988 hotline, someone. They want to help. <clears throat> They're not going to think badly of you. They're not going to think less of you. They're going to be so pleased with you that you were so courageous to pick up that phone and call them. I promise you. I promise you, it will be a start to a new. And then ask Jesus to come live in your life and grab a hold of his word and use it, apply it. So many of us who have been born again believers for so long know the word, but sometimes we don't apply it to our own lives either. Apply it. God's there. He loves you. He loves you so much. And I love you. You are an important part of our lives, and I'm praying for you. Have a great night. God bless you.